Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my free training on Alien Skin Exposure X4. Please remember to share this video, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I call this episode Basic Processing because I'm going to go over in detail how to use the adjustments that are found in the Basic tab. In my opinion, the most important tab in Alien Skin X4. Usually, you do these adjustments first. And this really makes the base of your processing. If you screw something up here, it's going to be very difficult to get a decent looking image with all the other adjustments you'll be laying on top of it. So it's important that you get these basic adjustments right. So we're gonna work on this image and I wanna maximize my workspace. So I'm gonna go over here to the left panel and I'm just gonna click on this little triangle to get rid of that left panel or to hide it. Then I'm gonna go down to the bottom and I'm gonna click on this little triangle to get rid of that bottom panel. So now I maximized my workspace. Now, little power tip for you. When you do these sliders, you may find that they're kind of touchy. They're hard to adjust just right. You go a little bit to the right and it went too far, a little bit to the left, it's not far enough. You could get a little bit more throw on the sliders if you go to the panel uh, separator right here, this double line, and you bring it out. You can see how it's making those sliders larger? And that helps a lot. So uh, I'm gonna move that out a little bit to give me a little bit, bit more throw on the sliders. And we're gonna start right at the top. Now, if I wanted to process this image into a black and white image, I would start here. Just click right here where it says black and white and it will turn the image into a monochrome uh, image and you could process from this point forward. Now I'm gonna process this in color. So just wanted to make that point. And I will have a video in the future where I process an image from beginning to end in black and white. So look for that in a future episode. First thing I suggest you do is get white balance out of the way. Make sure that the uh, image looks either one, like the, the way you saw it. That's always good, right? We want the um, scene to represent what we saw. Or if you're really feeling artistic and you want to give some artistic flair, there's nothing wrong with getting the white balance totally different so that you're really... Um, giving a your interpretation of the scene. So that's fine. Just do whichever you like. Now there's three different ways to adjust white balance. One is you could just come to the temp tint sliders and adjust them directly. To the right with temp will warm the image up, to the left will cool it down. And then tint is you move that to the right and you can see more it's magenta and left's more green. Now usually what you do with these sliders is let's say I want to warm this image up. I would go to the temp and I'd move that to the right to warm it up. Then you might see that you're starting to get the whites in this case, or sometimes the shadows, or in this case both. You're, you're giving them a color tone that you don't like. You could eliminate that tone with the tint slider by moving that you know, to try to get the white back. Now, that's what you do. So you basically move the temp to get the temp where you want it, and then move the tint to get the whites and the blacks back to where you want it. So you could do that. Just move those sliders directly. Typically, I don't like doing that unless I'm feeling really creative, and that hasn't been late, uh, often lately at least. To the left of temp, you'll see there's these little lines. If you click on those, you could see there's a, a little menu pops up, and those are the actual white balance adjustments that are in your camera. You can see this as shot, that's exactly as I shot the image, my camera's interpretation of the scene. When I go below that, there's daylight. Daylight's a little too cool. Below that is cloudy. Cloudy's a little warmer. Shade's a little warmer. Tungsten's gonna be super cool. And fluorescent is gonna be cool. Flash, even though I didn't use a flash, there's no rule saying you can't choose a flash white balance if you like it. Um, in this case, I don't care for it. And then customs, just when you manually adjust those sliders, that's really a custom adjustment. Tell you the truth, I don't like any of these kind of preset, camera preset adjustments, so I don't care for those. But there is a third way to adjust white balance, and that's with this eyedropper. To use it, just click on it. You'll make it active, and your cursor turns into that eyedropper in a little magnifier. Now, if you wanted this 
to represent the scene exactly like you saw it. If you took a picture of this scene with a gray card in the scene, all you would need to do is click on that 18% gray card and theoretically you should get the exact lighting, the exact white balance you had when you snapped the shutter. Now, of course, most of us don't take a picture with a white uh, gray card, I'm sorry, in the scene. So we have to find something else. So what you could do is, in this case, maybe find a gray cloud. Now, I will say when I was there taking this picture, the sun was rising behind me and it was super warm. The building was just glowing golden. But the ice looked like ice. It was still kind of cool. So I really don't want to uh, pick a white balance that is like really warm like this, that's making the clouds and the ice really warm as well. But I want a white balance, not that's cool either because I don't care for that, but I want a white balance that kind of represented what I saw. So I'm gonna to try to find a gray cloud that's middle gray, 18% gray, as much as possible. And I think right around there that the ice still isn't that warm, but the building is pretty warm and that's the way I saw it. So I like it right there. And what I love actually about Alien Skin Exposure X4, that's unlike other applications, you just have to hover over an area and you'll get a uh, sampling of that white balance if you click there. Now I'm not gonna click there. So it does make this a lot easier. So I'm just gonna find that area again, somewhere over here, and that looks pretty good. So I'll just left click or click with the left mouse button once and that applied that white balance to the scene and I'm done. I'm done with white balance. Now this second group and you can see how this basic tab is is in three groupings. The top is white balance. The middle grouping is tone and this really is important. This is where you can make or break the image and there's a lot of different philosophies how to go about doing this. I encourage you to experiment. Look at other people who teach uh, how to process images, see how they do it. Maybe you'd like the way they do it a little better. I mentioned in a previous episode, I borrow from videographers. Videographers tend to shoot, or will, you know, a professional videographer would shoot digitally in what they call a log setting, which is very flat, uh, very low contrast, very low color. The reason why they do that mainly is it, first of all, minimizes noise. And secondly, it's easier to bring that scene or that video to where they want it to be if they start out with a very flat, low color uh, scene. And I take that same type of philosophy over here to still photography. I shoot raw, which is a very generally flat kind of setting. And then I tend to make it a little flatter to start out with. So what I'll do is, I, I, now first of all, I should say, if you didn't nail exposure, you could go to the exposure slider, move it to the right to increase, left to decrease exposure, double click on the name to reset it. You could add and remove contrast with the contrast slider. Um, I'm gonna do that in a moment. I would like to do that a little later in my processing so I don't do contrast right away. And usually I like to use the tone curve for contrast, but in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to adjust the contrast slider. It's pretty easy, just push it. So I'm gonna do the highlight shadows, whites and blacks first. And what I'll tend to do is I make the image even flatter. Well, how would you do that? Well, you'd make the highlights a little less bright by moving the highlight slider to the left. Then I'd make the shadow slide a little brighter by moving that to the right. So I'm opening up the shadows and I'm bringing down the highlights. So I'm really making the image a, a lot flatter. There's a lot less contrast here. Then now what I start to do from this point is I start to bring that contrast back. And the way I do that is with the contrast slider and the clarity slider. Clarity is really mid-tone contrast. It gives the effect that you're making the image sharper, but what you're actually doing is adding a little bit of micro contrast to the mid-tones. And you can see as I move that to the right, it added a little bit more contrast. We're getting a little more detail in the building and those trees. If I move it to the left, you can see how it kind of just blurs everything out. So we're gonna move that to the right, pretty high, like around 35-ish, looks good. Then I'll go to the contrast slider itself and I'll move that to the right to add contrast. Now, there's some cases where you want, want lower contrast, move it to the left, but I'm gonna move it to the right. Now you can see how I'm bringing that contrast back. 
shot raw. Raw was relatively low contrast. I even brought contrast down even lower with the highlights and shadow slider. Now I'm bringing it back with the clarity and contrast slider. So that looks pretty good. Now if I want to see the before and after, go up here in the top left hand corner and just click on that before. There's before and there's after. Before, after. So you can see it looks good already and we really haven't done a lot. The next thing you'd like to do is get a white and black point. Um, usually with the white and black point, uh, there's again, there's philosophies on how to do this. You'd like to um, have your image well balanced. Uh, tone, usually, in, you know, some scenes might be darker and you have more darker tones and some might be lighter and you have more light, lighter tones, you know, like if you're a um, high key shot or a low key shot. But in this case, it's a very well balanced kind of landscape. So what I want to do is I want to bring the whites up. I want to make the whites a little brighter. Remember, I brought them down with highlights. Now I want to make them even brighter. Now you could just come in and eyeball it. Nothing wrong with that. Another thing you could do is you hold the Alt or Option key in. Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. Click on that slider and you'll see the screen turns black. When you start to move it to the right, you're going to see some channels, the color channels start to clip. You can see red is clipping, green is clipping over there on the left, and if I go far enough, you'll start to see blue clipping. Now if you see like gray or white, white means all three channels are clip, clipping in that area, and a gray would mean two of the three channels are clipping. Now usually I don't like the whites to clip much, so I would bring that down quite a bit. Little clipping over here, not, not significant. So that's how I set the white, the white point. Similarly for the black point, I again will hold that Alt or Option key in, click on the black slider. This time the screen turns black, and you can see we're already starting to clip the green channel. If I start moving that down a little more, we're starting to clip a little more. Now usually I like to clip the blacks a little bit more than I like to clip the whites. Yeah, to me that adds more tonal depth to the image. And you can see now we have some really dark pine trees and some lighter trees in there as well. And I'll do a before and an after. And a before and an after. Now at this point, don't you can feel free to go back and readjust the white balance if you think that you want to tweak it. Go back and readjust anything, any of the sliders you did. Um, you know, but I kind of like what I did here. Now, the third and last part of the basic tab is vibrant saturation. Now, I had clarity and I did kind of cheat. I went down there already and did clarity. But vibrance and saturation, and there's really a few different differences between these two sliders. First of all, saturation affects every single pixel. If I bring it all the way down, you can see that we have a black and white image. Vibrance doesn't affect every pixel equally, and if I bring it down, you can see that part of the image is a little bit black and white, but there's still some color in there, a little bit. So vibrance is a little less heavy-handed. The second difference between these two sliders is if a color is saturated, if you move vi uh, saturation to the right, you will oversaturate that color. Vibrance, on the other hand, will bring the colors to saturation, but will not oversaturate anything. So again, vibrance is a little less heavy-handed than saturation. The third difference between these two sliders is vibrance does not affect all the colors equally. It does not affect reds, pinks, lighter skin tone colors as much as it does other colors. So if you have a person in the shot, if it's a lifestyle portrait of a person and you want to uh, make their clothing pop in the land, the surroundings around them pop with color, you're probably better off adjusting the vibrant slider because it won't make their skin tone look too like sunburned, whereas the saturation slider would. Also, if you're starting out with a really bright, colorful image, you might not want to use the saturation slider because you might start to oversaturate something. The vibrant slider might be a better choice. Now this is a pretty much a straight landscape shot. There's really nothing to worry about as far as skin tone or anything like that. So I'm just going to go to the saturation slider and move it to the right. Now what my style is, I don't tend to go too high on either of these. So I think right around 12 looks good. Now, let's see, there's before and there's after. Now I'm looking at it, it looks okay, but I, something's still bothering me about the whites. Now I did the white point. 
by holding in that alter option key and clicking on the white slider, remember? But I think it's just the whites aren't white enough. So I'm just going to move it a little more to the right and see what that looks like. I think that looks a little better to my eye, at least for my processing. So there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. And there is everything you need to know on how to use the basic tab in Alien Skin Exposure X4. Now in our next episode, I'm going to start introducing a couple of the tools. Specifically, we're going to do some spot heal and, and we'll work on this image. I want to get rid of these sticks that are on the ice. I think they're kind of distracting. And I'm going to show you how to do it with the spot heal uh, tool. And then we'll go in and we'll start working on detail. Of course, detail is really important, sharpening and noise reduction. And we'll cover that in our next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and share this video. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find thousands of totally free videos and articles to help you with your photography.